Ozempic. 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 Amy Schumer, Charles Barkley, Elon Musk. These are just a few examples of people who were able to lose weight thanks to the drug Ozempic. Ozempic injections. It's the latest weight loss craze. You can eat anything you want and still lose weight. There is a huge rise of misinformation happening at this very moment that we have to fact check. We're diving into a hot topic today. The human body is beautifully complex and we might just have found a brand new revolutionary drug that'll help people lose a lot of weight. It's called Ozempic, also known as semaglutide. These medicines come in many shapes and sizes and you've might already seen them around. They mimic a molecule in the body called glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 as we're gonna refer to it from now on. It's a sequence of amino acids that get secreted in the intestines as soon as food enters them. The function of this naturally occurring molecule in the body is to one, act on receptors in the brain, namely in the hypothalamus where the control for appetite lies, through suppressing the feeling of being hungry. The secondary function is through slowing down digestion in your stomach, which decreases the spike in blood sugar we find. And three, it also acts on the pancreas where it influences hormones like insulin and glucagon, which helps manage blood sugar level, which also helps to decrease insulin resistance, which we know to be one of the biggest factors influencing weight loss. Let me explain insulin resistance a little bit better. When you eat a carbohydrate, it goes into the stomach and it's broken down into glucose molecules. The glucose molecules then go into the bloodstream and now gets called blood sugar. The body is extremely sensitive to changes in blood sugar. If it goes too low, you feel mind fog, confusion, tiredness, and when it goes too high, we feel confused, disorientated, and we could even end up in a coma. If the body cannot keep its blood sugar levels under control, lots of bad things happen. Arteries get damaged, leading to clumps of fat being able to pile up against them that leads to strokes, heart attacks, nerves can get damaged leading to a loss of sight and hearing. Now people with diabetes are at major risk for these things because diabetes in essence revolves around the body's inability to control blood sugar. Lucky for us the body has this beautiful organ called the pancreas which secrete blood sugar regulating hormones called insulin and glucagon. Insulin helps the body take the blood sugar and puts it into stores, which helps the body lower its blood sugar levels. And glucagon helps the body take the sugar out of the stores, brings it back into the blood to help increase blood sugar levels again. Now where insulin resistance comes into play is at the cells where our body wants to store the blood sugar, namely the liver and muscle tissue. The cells there don't want to listen to insulin anymore, they refuse to open up their gates for storage. The cells don't want to listen to insulin because they've been abused. They've been overfilled for way too long and as a protective mechanism they stopped listening. They in essence numbed their receptors to the call of insulin to open their gates. This leaves the body with a massive problem because it senses danger as the blood sugar levels keep on rising and you might go into a coma soon. So the body decides to pump up production of insulin with the hopes that when thousands of soldiers stamp at the gates of the cells they might just open up. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. The cells won't budge and the gates won't open. The only time cells will open is when they want to, which is only when they feel a big need for energy, like when you're working out or when some serious activity needs to be done. Just a side note, this overproduction of insulin is like revving an engine into the red for way too long. Eventually, the engine just breaks, and this is called diabetes type 2. Long-term insulin resistance and the need for the pancreas to overproduce insulin causes the insulin-producing cells to burn out and eventually die. That's then when people with diabetes have to manually inject themselves with insulin to help manage their blood sugar levels. But back to the main story. So we have this issue. The body's blood sugar levels keeps on rising and neither the liver nor the muscle tissue where the blood sugar usually gets stored wants to open up their cells because, well, they're full and they don't want to listen to insulin anymore. And this is called insulin resistance. Now luckily the body has a trick up its sleeve. The body resorts to its last alternative fat cells. When the body can't seem to store blood sugar in any cells that can actually use that energy, it goes and stores it in fat cells and the fat love it. They'll never ever say no to energy. When they get full they just duplicate themselves and voila more space for energy storage. And this is why insulin resistance makes it so difficult to lose weight. The body is simply in fat storage mode, energy storage mode, and very little of the blood sugar that we actually eat goes to the cells and gets used for energy. It just all goes straight to the fat storage sites. 
Now that's where Ozempic comes in and saves the day. Ozempic in essence, one, stops us from eating too much, which stops this massive spike in blood sugar levels that the body has to deal with, and two, Ozempic slows the gastric emptying processes, the process whereby the body breaks down food in the stomach. And this means the speed at which that blood sugar level rises is way lower. This gives the body some more time to actually use the energy instead of just sending it straight to the fat storage sites. Now this all sounds great, Ozempic helps me feel less hungry, it helps my body control blood sugar levels even better. Why are so many people saying Ozempic is bad? Let's have a look. Let's start with some of the listed side effects. Nausea and vomiting. Remember I said that one of the main functions for Ozempic is slowing down gastric emptying, so slowing down the process of how food gets broken down in the stomach? Well, imagine if food stays in your stomach for longer and you don't control the total amount of food you eat. Too much food in your stomach then stimulates the vagal nerve, causing nausea. And lots of it. Some people even report that consistent nausea doesn't go away even when they stop using Ozempic. That is an issue, and Dr. Mike says it so well. Anytime you're prescribing a medication, there needs to be a risk-benefit ratio done for the individual sitting in front of you. And ultimately, the individual needs to decide if the medication is right for them. It's still important to factor in that there are legitimate risks to taking these medications. There are side effects. People have GI issues, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, pancreatitis, kidney issues. There is a potential issue of increases in thyroid thyroid cancer long-term with these medications. All of these are legitimate concerns. One thing Dr. Mike, however, doesn't mention is the effect outside injected hormones have on inside physiology. When introducing an appetite suppressant from the outside into the body, the body's appetite center changes and becomes less sensitive to inside hormone changes. So the moment you get off of Ozempic, you might battle with uncontrollable bouts of hunger, or even worse, your appetite might slow down so much that it becomes an eating disorder challenge to deal with. In almost all cases, if there's no medical disease diagnosis, we do not want to meddle with medications to achieve something that could simply be fixed by not pumping our bodies full of junk food all the time. If you clicked on this video hoping to find an easy fix for weight loss, I'm sorry, but Ozempic isn't it. I do, however, have a solution for you. It's called decreasing your carbohydrate intake. If you do this, your body won't need to deal with all of these high levels of blood sugar, and insulin resistance over time will decrease. And if you exercise appropriately, your body will be able to use the blood sugar, meaning it won't get stored in your fat cells. So there's a completely healthy and natural way to get the exact same results without all of the negative side effects. These scientific facts are all, by the way, what I use to coach my clients for weight loss. I give my clients a low carbohydrate meal plan, which they find on my app, and they get a custom workout plan to help them get insulin sensitive again, and they drop crazy amounts of weight. I mean, have a look at this. So to conclude, there are many supplements and medical pills that claim to help you lose weight. However, everybody knows that there is no pill that can fix an unhealthy lifestyle. If you for some reason decide to take Ozempic for weight loss, even though you're a healthy adult that doesn't have diabetes, just know that after you get off of it, you'll most likely gain all of your weight again. I'm almost willing to say that it's a 100% guarantee because you haven't addressed your lifestyle yet. You haven't figured out which foods work for you and how weight loss actually works. So you're not in control of the results you're getting. I'm currently making a video debunking another myth and that is called collagen supplementation, which you might like. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that one. There's a little button here somewhere below where you can click on and this video right here, Probably pretty interesting for you seeing as you are already on your weight loss journey and these types of science debunk videos interest you. I'm honestly pretty happy with how this video came out. I haven't seen the full edit yet, but I'm excited for what's to come. Please click the like button below. I want to get this video to as many people as possible before too many people fall in the trap of Ozempec and all of these nonsense online trends. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.